Okay, we will uh, get started in just a minute or two, just allowing our attendees to uh, enter the webinar. All right, welcome to the Stony Brook Schools virtual open house. My name is Yuri Francis and I serve as the director of enrollment management here at the school. I'm so glad that you could join us today. This event will be the last of our virtual open house series. In the past, we did cover a few other topics, which included the academic program, athletics, campus life, and spirituality, character, and leadership. The focus today will be the arts program. Now, before we review the agenda, I wanna take a few minutes to show you our school video. Choose one, wisdom, imagination. Both are valuable. Both are things we want our generation to have. But sometimes we find ourselves splitting the world into binary choices, one or the other, thinking we have to choose between being grounded or taking flight, not realizing that wisdom and imagination need each other. For imagination without wisdom can be impulsive and wisdom without imagination quickly becomes dry. So what happens when education cultivates both equally? When we follow the model of a creator who both imagined form out of void and put wisdom into words, the Stony Brook School believes that when wisdom meets imagination, it produces great vision. And the world needs great vision. Innovation is happening so quickly today that it keeps outpacing itself. And we don't always have the eyes to see whether this is good. Our values get shaped by what's expedient instead of what's true. We want to be a generation of leaders with the vision to see the difference and the character to see beyond. I'm learning to see beyond my own needs to how I can serve others. I'm learning to see beyond just taking classes to the opportunity of finding new passions. I see leadership as an opportunity to love people and to help them grow. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what job I'm going to have in the future, but I know that whatever's coming, I'm going to be confident and ready for it. I'm learning to see beyond answers to the questions behind them. I'm learning to see beyond my own culture to a bigger understanding of the world. I want to help my students to see beyond even college and to see 10 or 15 years into the future into who they can be. At Stony Brook, we're learning to bring wisdom and imagination together to create great vision. Because at the core, vision is an act of faith, requiring both wisdom to know the greatness of God and imagination to be open to His calling. Vision that puts conviction into motion and gives structure to a dream that both chases and stands ground, that develops both the skill sets and mindsets for jobs that don't exist yet. Vision that accelerates, vision that serves. So, if we ever think we have to choose just one, wisdom, imagination, we will have the vision to see beyond. Today's program will feature a fantastic group of presenters. You will hear from Dustin Ramirez, 
our performing arts department chair, Anna McDonald, our visual arts department chair, and in addition to my faculty colleagues, we have three amazing students that will share their experience. The students include Lemuel, and Sarah, and Harry. And later in the open house, you will have an opportunity to ask questions about the arts program. And near the end of the program, I will cover next steps and review the application process. And now here are the expectations for this event. By now, you probably have noticed that both your camera and microphone are turned off. This helps our speakers avoid any distractions. During the virtual open house, we do encourage you to type your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now, if for some reason you're not seeing the Q&A button, then click on the three small buttons at the bottom right. We will try our best to address all of your questions, but please note that the focus of the Q&A session will be the arts program. This, the recording from this open house will be shared on the Stony Brook's website. And now I have the pleasure of turning the program over to my colleague, Dustin Ramirez. Good evening. It's so nice to speak to all of you uh, tonight, and I look forward just to like touching briefly on the performing arts side. My name is Dustin Ramirez. I'm the director of performing arts, and I also direct our choirs here in Teach Music Theory. And then you also see that uh, Mrs. Jamie Ramirez, she's also my wife. She's our orchestra director, and then Mrs. Majida Smith is our theater director. Uh, we offer a few different classes in the performing arts. We have our middle school chorus, which is seventh and eighth graders. Our concert choir, which is a non-audition group, uh, that's ninth uh, through 12th graders. Our chamber singers, which is a smaller select group, um, is available to ninth through 12th graders. And then we also offer our chamber ensemble for uh, instrumentalists, seventh through ninth graders, our chamber orchestra for ninth through 12th graders, and then advanced topics in music theory, which is 10th through 12th grade. You can see we uh, are a very accomplished program, even though we're a small school. Uh, we've received superior ratings, best in class, and overall specialty choir um, at the 2012 Walt Disney World Festival Disney contest, a superior rating at the 2018 Trills and Thrills Festival, second place in 2018 at a famed national contest in New York City, third place in 2019. Overall high school choir um, at the 2019 Music in the Parks, second place for our concert choir at 2019 Music in the Parks. We also were selected as a participant in the 2013 presidential inauguration. We performed at the 2017 New York City World Movement Day convention, and we also were selected to perform in Dallas, Texas at the 2019 NAFME National Conference. Aside from our classes that we offer during the academic day, we also have a private lesson program. These lessons occur during the free periods or study halls of our students. Uh, they are $417 for 30 minute lesson per trimester, $600 for 45 minute lessons per trimester. And we offer private lessons in piano, voice, strings, which include violin, viola, cello, and bass, guitar, acoustic, classical, electric, and bass, brass, woodwinds and then every now and then the student comes in with a specialty instrument and we will find a teacher for that student also uh currently we're in the thick of our theater arts season the auditions are in late fall and they the season runs from november to february uh there are so, a lot of spots to fill our we need actors musicians costuming makeup set design lighting stage hands and recent shows have been Clue, All Shook Up, Into the Woods, Steel Magnolias, The Sound of Music, An Ideal Husband, Godspell, and Fiddler on the Roof. This year's production is The Addams Family, and you can see they are, the shows will run February 10th, 11th, and we have two shows on February 12th. Also, aside from our ensembles and private lesson program, we are members of NISMA, NAFME, LISFA, SCAMIA, and NISCAME. All of these uh, programs that we're involved in 
they also come with an honor ensemble where students can audition and become members of that. And we've every year send numerous kids to these festivals and it's a great way to represent our school and our program. And at this time, I'd like for Lemuel to speak on behalf of our program, Performing Arts. Um, good evening, uh, my name is Lemuel. Um, I am a senior, I'm a six year senior actually. And I've been in the uh, Performing Arts uh, program for about uh, five years. I started in eighth grade. Uh, so I was in the middle school choir for one year um, I moved up into a concert choir, which is from um, ninth grade to twelfth grade. Um, so my experience is is been fantastic. Like love it. Um, it's been um, a passion of mine um, for a while. Uh, I've been singing since about maybe uh, seven years old. I was in a church choir, and um, it was very um, entertaining for me to join a, a high school choir. Um, I haven't really gotten any aspirations to be a singer yet. Uh, uh, singing here has made me enjoy um, uh, being in the performing arts department uh, for so long. Um, I'm actually a part of Chamber Singers um, right now. Um, that is uh, kind of like a step up from concert choir. It is, um, we we are competitive. We go on competition sometimes, um, even though it's been pretty difficult for these past couple of years. Um, we still find a way to, um, find a, comp a competition or two that we will be uh, performing in. Um, I've also been a part of the uh, visual arts, which we will get to soon. Um, I was in uh, seven, uh, well, art in seventh grade, and then um, I took videography uh, my uh, 2020, 2020, 2021 year. Um, that class uh, uh, taught me a lot about, um, well, basically making videos in such a short time. Um, I learned techniques, uh, 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 ways to film that would be more uh, pleasing to the eye, things like that, and um, just two very um, uh, fruitful departments. And uh, so, um, on that note, I'd like to pass it to um, Mrs. Anna McDonald. She is the uh, head of the visual department. Thank you, Lemuel. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna McDonald. Um, I'm an alum of the Stony Brook School, so I came back here after teaching on the West Coast, where I started my career as an art educator, um, college level teaching at the Seattle Pacific University and University of Washington. Um, greetings. Studio art here at Stony Brook it is, is an environment where students learn just how in demand creativity and visual communication is. We have exploded in recent years, extending our offerings based on student interests. In the next slide, you can see our offerings are um, quite diverse. Um, our middle school offerings are broad, and we're trying to extend opportunities for them to get as much opportunity to be in performance or creative visual arts as possible so that they can have a hands-on entry into um, learning at Stony Brook. Um, our course offerings are divided into three categories, middle school art electives, elective sequences, and advanced year-long courses that require prerequisites. Students are allowed to progress through a single sequence in studio art, 3D studio, graphic design, digital photography, and videography before committing to either advanced art or digital imaging. Students are also allowed to sample around in each of these categories to simply fulfill upper school art requirements. The students who identify themselves as interested in attending competitive art schools are encouraged to take AP art their junior year for the sake of developing a robust portfolio by the time college apps are due. We give our students a lot of guidance in preparing for their next academic uh, journey. Um, next slide illustrates that our goal is for students to have the best shot at discovering their own personal affinity for specific media within visual arts. We have worked hard as a team of educators to expose our students to as wide a variety of media as possible um, for a school of our size, especially. Students have opportunities to sculpt from a live model, carve wax for um, lost wax jewelry casting, learn drafting tricks from a practicing architect, experiment with sand animation, fabricate original garments for a photo shoot, or design products that could actually go into production. 
Mini courses are one week intensive courses, which enable exposure to additional media. So you can see here on this slide, a list of some of our most recent visual art mini course offerings, um, fashion design, character design, animation, art therapy, scenic design, architecture, and jewelry, uh, jewelry making. Um, here are some work samples taken from the last four years representing traditional two and three dimensional media. This sample represents the intermediate level projects training in foundation techniques that are classically part of the atelier tradition. But we also specialize in contemporary media, including digital arts and experimental media. Here, uh, this work sample represents recent student work in our digital and experimental media courses. Example projects featured here include architecture, stop motion animation, character design, digital photography, film installation, art and performance, uh, installation art and performance art. So design thinking figures heavily into our 3D studies curriculum. We incorporate the Stanford School of Design method, which begins with empathy and the practice of relating uh, to the specific needs of others. Emotional intelligence development is a very intentional priority in our department. We also expose our students to visiting artists and professionals so that they have opportunities to receive experience feedback and ask questions about what it's like to pursue a career in the arts. This slide shows examples of independent work produced by a student who discovered his junior year that he had a passion for architecture. After he was accepted to his top choice architecture program, we received word from the admissions team that Carlos's portfolio really, really stood out to them. That was exciting for us. For the serious art school bound student, a minimum of six credits or three electives and one year long advanced level course qualify a student for AP art. We offer AP art uh, two, also, for students who really want to polish their portfolios or try out a different discipline for their um, focus. We strive to prepare students for the rigorous demands of creative careers that require personal insight and self-motivation. The courses listed above emphasize independent and or collaborative projects, which help students find their unique voice, develop initi initiative, and practice leadership skills. A lot really comes down to how successful a student is at following their inspiration and weaving their diverse interests together on their own. As students progress through elective sequences, teachers shift from providing instruction to facilitating self-discovery. I'd like to introduce to you now Harry, currently a sophomore, to share his own personal experience. Harry joined us last year as an online student in China. This year, he made the big leap to join us on campus. Welcome, Harry. Hi, so um, my name is Harry. I am currently a sophomore and an international student at the Stonebrook School. Last year, I studied studio art as an online student because of the pandemic. I remember I had my easel right next to my desk in my bedroom, so I could at least try to actively participate in the class, even when being virtual. This year, because I'm actually in the school right now, things have become much better. I'm now studying advanced art. The teacher lets us design our own projects every week, giving us the freedom on what type of artistic skill we might want to develop. I try to use this as an opportunity to express my other interests in life through art. Recently, as you can see on the slides, I've been doing a series of sketchings about insects, which corresponds to my interest in entomology. So you see, there's a lot of freedom when you get to this stage. Now, allow Mrs. McDonald to continue her speech on the fine arts. Thank you, Harry. Um, uh, another thing that's really dear to my heart specifically um, is uh, multicultural literacy. Uh, it's important that we recognize as uh, leaders here are mentors that the world is changing really rapidly and there are a lot of needs for our students to be seen and heard in light of events that are going on. So the discipline required to develop advanced technique is influenced by personal values, which are influenced by culture, tradition, and community values. So students deserve creative role models from diverse backgrounds. Our curriculum and teaching philosophy encourages students to identify cultural narratives and articulate personal experiences and ideas through experimental and also traditional media. 
We coach artistic attitudes that are edifying for a diverse classroom. Uh, so trust building is one of my first goals uh, as a teacher. Um, our teachers are dedicated to helping students discover a sense of purpose and belonging to the school community. To speak further on this topic, I'd love to introduce to you Stony Brook Senior and Sarah. Oh, I apologize. I realized I was muted. Um, thank you so much, Mrs. McDonald, um, for the introduction. So I'm also a six year senior, just like Lemuel, and I've taken art classes at SBS since a long time. And one of the things that's really special to me about SBS is the ability to not only take art classes here and learn to expand your technique here and in the classroom, but also SBS's support for taking um, university level courses on art history outside over the summer. And it was really huge, um, all of the support that I had from my art teachers here that gave me um, the ability to learn and to put what I had learned in those art history classes into what I'm doing right now in AP art. And further to highlight that it's, really amazing just how interconnected um, one can be in art and coming from um, originally from Eastern Europe, um, my family traditions are very different from the ones here. And it was really a blessing to be able to combine those in art with whatever we were learning in class and now finally to create a portfolio of my own in AP art. And I'd like to pass it back now to Mrs. McDonald. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ann Sarah. Okay, this next slide shows how we need to get out and I'm really big on fostering a sense of, of um, circulation. And so inspiration, students need to learn how to feed themselves inspiration for the rest of their lives. So we have the luxury of block periods, which are um, um, 83 minute classes. So we can get out on buses and go to, um, local parks, we can go to the beach where you can see in this slide, uh, the students did their um, gesture drawing on a sandbar. And as the tide came up, they had to watch their drawings get washed away. And so they had to learn to work with speed. And that was, we used our environment to our advantage in the learning circle. We also can walk to the university right across the train tracks. We have the Stony Brook University where there's the Wong Center and there was an Escher exhibit and the physics center this year that we got to um, uh, explore a little bit or we will get to see more art throughout the year. Um, so um, we also prioritize showcasing our works uh, our students works through exhibition. So um, Art. We have a fantastic AP art show at the end of the year. Uh, goals and objectives. Um, you can see here that we have, um, you know, attitudes that are really important for us to coach. Reverence for life giving truth, sincere curiosity, truth seeking habits, uh, character formation, self awareness, and other awareness. An attitude that remains coachable despite challenges and setbacks, self motivation, ability to motivate and inspire others perceptual skills and technical ability applied to diverse media and creative problem solving. A continuation of that list, the ability to recognize and evaluate quality design and works of art, active participation in critical response methodology, positive collaboration with others, multicultural literacy as art history exposure, understanding how art and design influence and reflect contemporary perspectives. And finally, self-promotion, practical preparation for pursuing art at an institute of higher learning um, or higher education and, and vocations that demand perceptual ability. Just to finish off, our students, they accomplish great things. Um, um, our students win awards. The Scholastic Art and Writing Competition is, is one that we frequently have um, uh, top uh, awards from, and the Blick Student Art Competition, the Space Foundation International Student Art Contest, 
National Film Festival for Talented Youth. We just last year had a student take second place in that really, really prestigious um, uh, uh, competition. And we also have um, each year students selected for competitive internships and pre-college programs such as Cornell's A Architecture Art Planning Program. Our artists become uh, university students who employ uh, their training um, to bring creative, um, sorry, to bring create creativity to a wide variety of fields. Photographers, journalists, designers, educators, illustrators, entrepreneurs, game creators, and film creators all um, are represented in our alumni. Students at the most competitive art schools in the US, including Rhode Island, School of Design, USC's Rossi School of Art and Design, and Parsons and the School of Visual Arts are recent um, acceptances from the previous year. So thank you for listening. I'm going to now hand off the baton back to Mr. Francis. I hope that you will ask lots of questions later. Great. Thank you, Mrs. McDonald. So just a reminder that you can type your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And, and while you're typing in those questions, uh, and to provide you with a little more time, I'll highlight a few things for you. If you want to follow up directly with uh, Mr. Ramirez or Mrs. McDonald, you can find their email addresses on the screen. And during this panel discussion, as I mentioned earlier, we plan to focus on questions uh, pertaining to the arts program at SBS. Uh, and, and it's important to note that we did cover uh, some other topics in our previous open houses, and I encourage you to take a look at the recordings on the school website. And those can be found in the admissions section under uh, virtual campus visits. And now we can get started uh, with our panel discussion. Uh. All right, I'm going to, uh, Start with uh, Mrs. McDonald. Um, can you th just think about uh, maybe some frequently asked questions that come up um, as it relates to uh, the the fine arts? Uh, sure. Um, sometimes we are asked, "What's the um, gender diversity in our art program?" Um, and I can I could forward that question on to my my two students here represented, um, but the quick answer to that is um, that our um, studio all of our sequence programs are equally represented by both uh, male and female gender, and the curriculum is really um, specifically chosen to be exciting to um, diversity of um, gender, and of course, gender is a big question lately. So um, we try to embrace um, an openness for discussions. Our students often find art classes a safe place to uh, ask questions like that. And sometimes it comes out through their work. And another frequently asked question is how, like I have a child who's really independent and they just need to be able to roll up their sleeves and steer their own course. And I think, some of our, our students have already mentioned already a little bit that they've had some freedom to really um, not just be hemmed in by a pre-structured curriculum, that there is a lot of opportunity to um, become more of the driver and the motivator of your the direction for your work. So we really prioritize that fostering of independence. So we would encourage students who might be very artistic and not fit into the mold uh, that the traditional mold of a of a um, academic artist to try Stony Brook out. 
Got it. And uh, and actually, uh, one question that came up was um, within the SBS program, can I play more than one instrument? I'm going to say yes. I have seen many students pull out multiple instruments and um, be in my dorm where I'm a dorm mother, um, dorm parent. I have um, several dorm daughters who have multiple instruments and one of them asks me um, to unlock spaces in the dorm on a regular basis so she can practice there in her own dorm environment. So I think that there are some students who take private piano lessons and perform percussion for the orchestra. Um, and yes, so the art requirement a student can go in that direction if they are fulfilling musical arts, if they're interested in singing in voice and orchestra, their art requirement is fulfilled in that. They're not required to be in visual arts. We want students to feel like they can specialize. Got it. And is there a skill level or a certain skill level required uh, to be part of TAS? That's a very good question. Would you like me to field that one, Yuri? Uh, yes, or, or perhaps uh, one of the students. Yeah, you could you could start off, and then maybe we have one of the students answer it after you. Yeah, I'm not sure if this these three students are in Lem. You have been in some way and in form involved in TAS, but from what I know, um, TAS I've been directing the scenic design for uh, about eight years, uh, seven years. And um, what we try to do is balance a uh, new skill with a uh, skill that's experienced. So um, there have been a couple of times where I've had to select uh, painters for my scene who um, have a lot of experience. But one year I asked to, to, to make space for a few who hadn't had a chance to get in. And that is something that we do seek to promote is that there are opportunities for students who are um, looking for their niche and this is their desired niche. And, but uh, there is definitely a piece of um, skill that we are auditioning. These um, people are often competing for spaces, but thankfully we have been able to um, pick productions that really involve a lot of kids so we just get as many kids as we can um, on that stage in that tech room behind the scenes so i hope that answers the question yeah and uh another question uh i think perhaps the the students can uh address this one in terms of kind of what's what do they like most about kind of arts at sbs and kind of what uh what has really kind of inspired them and uh gotten them excited over the years. And Sarah, you want to start off? Start off? Sure. Yeah, definitely. I can start off. Um, so I think my favorite part about arts at SBS is my teacher's guidance. Um, I've had I've been in classes with all of the arts teachers here, um, be it in art specifically or also in music. And my favorite part is definitely Aside from their guidance, also the freedom to choose um, and also the ability to have a structured path. So for students who are not as sure of what they want to do for at the moment in art and still want to figure it out and want to learn more on their technique, there's a lot about that. And also for more advanced students, when especially when you get to more advanced classes like advanced art or um, studio art or even AP art, you're able to build your own curriculum, as Harry was saying before. And when you get to AP art, it's really amazing how you're finally able to piece together everything that you've learned over the years and create something, um, which in our case is a portfolio. It can be 2D or um, even 3D in some cases. And you're able to combine all of what you've learned, your own emotions, your history and background, and also all of the skill sets. And that's definitely my, been my favorite part at SBS. Can I compliment Ann Sarah for a second, really briefly, and just say that she did something really interesting with her project. It, she, um, I, I identified a, a woman who is a Paralympic rower 
and and Sarah um, was able to take a cast of her hand and create design a 3D printed or um, she scanned her whole hand and created a grip for her or that would enable her to row better and compete as a Paralympic athlete. And I think this is a really exciting fusion of different disciplines. And I, I get so excited when I see students running back and forth between two teachers. Last year, one of my students created a foundry and cast all the aluminum that was getting wasted after the one use and thrown out. He recycled it, melted it down into his foundry and made sculptures out of it. So um, just it's just exciting what happens. He was going to his STEM teacher for the thermodynamics and coming to me for how to cut up these blocks, these um, fire bricks and put them together. And the teachers here are like, come on, let's do it. <laughs> great, great. Uh, Lem, do you wanna go next? Uh, sure. Um, so to add on to what um, Mrs. McDonald and what Ann Sarah said, um, I feel like a big aspect is also the creativity, um, how the uh, teachers allow us to um, like tap into the creative part of our minds and like kind of sing lamps in a way um, and do like things that interest us. Like for example, in videography class, we had um, like a final project. There was no set topic. It was just, um, uh, we used everything that we learned throughout the year. And then um, we, we we put together kind of a, a video of something that we were interested in. For example, I made a, a video about the basketball team, um, something that I'm pretty interested in. Um, it was kind of like uh, uh, it was an interview slash a montage. So um, yeah, I just feel like it it helps. And even in the uh, performing arts, um, Mr. Ramirez is very uh, cordial about allowing us to. Um, express ourselves, um, whether it's, it's facial expressions or in vocals, things like that. So just like ha uh, having us express our creativity and um, yeah, thank you. Great, uh, Harry? Yeah, um, I'll just say that I'm grateful for the various options that are offered to students. Um, it seems that the teachers are re really wants to promote the flourishment of our lives. Um, adding on to Mrs. McDonald, um, she helped me, um, not only in the art, but also my other interests. And this might sound a little scary, but, um, she brought in one day, um, just, I think three days ago, she brought in a dead bird for me, <laughs> for me to study. Um, because I was studying ornithology back then and I'm still studying it. Uh, so I was able to, yeah, study the outer topography and anatomy of it and i was able to create pictures of birds and yeah it also helped my biology course wonderful thank you and uh, another question is um can i dance at sbs <laughs> thursday night jingle bell dance off of course you can <laughs> everyone's going to participate in that Uh, yeah. We recently actually started um, uh, a Sunday night or Sunday afternoon dance class. I don't know how often people have been going to that, but uh, yes, if you're interested in dancing, there's things like that. There's actually, um, if you're very uh, uh, committed to dancing, there's a um, ballet like uh, institution very close. I think it's like close to um, the university. It's called like Saskaya something of that sort um they're uh very very strict but um it's very a uh, beautiful place a uh, very um good program i think if you're interested in to that right yeah several of our classmates um have been over the past years actually been outside of sbs um and also in junction with sbs have been uh competitive dancers not just only ballet um and they've been telling us that it's really cool. Um, aside from just being able to dance, they're also able to qualify this as their sport credit, um, which here at SBS is a big part of our lives. So we have two sport credits um, that we're required to fulfill. And aside from just bonding with our teammates and with their classmates, 
it also allows us to bring a lot of diversity into what we do. And every single time we have a dance at school, it's always cool to see our classmates who really competitively dance, just bring it all on. And it's like, yeah, I know, I know they're good. Great. Uh, and another question that came up, uh, so my, my child loves graphic design. What are the options uh, at SBS for, for graphic design? Uh, Mrs. McDonald, you want to sure. start? Or? Sure. Um, yes, graphic design is something that a lot of our students are um, kind of uh, screaming for uh, professional development and or just a good sense of what it takes to succeed as a, a graphic designer. So that's actually a conversation that I'm having right now with my department is that's like a, an area we want to expand in and have more um, more um, expertise available to our students. So I'm really excited about that being kind of in the down like in on our goals for this year. But uh, we do offer a sequence in graphic design and we do offer like the set design um, team. Scenic design does include graphic design work and opportunities for students to feed their immediate community. But there is also an AP student who is doing focusing their portfolio this year on graphic design work. And that is, um, she really wants to be in a graphic design program. So um, our our mission is if we have students on that top level who have a specific interest, we get them as connected as possible um, to a, a professional who can give them the best advice possible. Um, and so, for example, in our, our architecture class, I have a practicing architect come in who designed some pieces for the Highline and he um, helps students, gives them tips about uh, how to draw plan and section drawings. So um, there is definitely opportunity. We have great access to all of the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, every student who comes to Stony Brook can get that access on day one when they walk in the door. So um, if they can't get a class in and they want to keep continuing their, their uh, art on the side, as they have passion, they can use those tools. Um, we love Lightroom in a photo photography program. Like we're using the top tools of the professionals and that's really exciting to be able to share that to, with our students. That's great. And the last question is, are there opportunities to engage in the art scene in New York City? Do you guys so, want to? Yeah. Let's get the students going. And Sarah, you want to start? Yeah, for sure. Um, SBS regularly has museum trips, especially when it's not the pandemic um, going on. We've had in the past um, several museum trips, I think to MoMA, um, before to the Met. And it's always a lot of fun to go with teachers and also just with friends to immerse in NYC and just really experience it all. Also, not like really just a walk from campus, you have the train station and you can take the train all the way up to Penn Station in New York City. And from there you can end up on your own to experience it all. And also um, there's also the Lincoln Center for ballet and you're always, they always have a mini course where you can go and see Broadway shows. I think this year is Hamilton, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so. You have a lot of exposure to theater close to home because we have the university right across campus and also art centers in the village right here, but also taking the train is so easy to get to NYC and experience it there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I think that concludes our panel discussion. I want to thank all of our panelists for doing such a wonderful job. And I also want to thank our attendees. Um, for your participation. Uh, and now we'll move on to the admissions process. Now, I plan to provide a summary of the admissions process, but I encourage you to take a look at our website for more detailed information because there's a lot uh, on this page uh, if you visit our How to Apply page on the website. Lots of information here. Uh, the first step, of the process is to complete the online inquiry form, which will enable the admissions office to stay in touch and keep you abreast of what's going on at SBS. And if you're ready to apply, 
then feel free to, to skip right to step number two, which is the, the application itself. The application includes a biographic profile, parent statement, and student essays. And SBS does offer uh, two options for the application. Uh, we have our own application, and we also accept the SAO. And applicants have a choice of early enrollment or standard enrollment, and then there's also uh, rolling admission. The early enrollment application deadline just passed, and that was uh, December 13th, while the standard enrollment uh, deadline is coming up on January 21st. And not to worry, if you happen to miss, uh, if you don't have a completed file by January 21st, you can take advantage of our rolling uh, admissions after that deadline. All applicants are required to interview, and all of our interviews uh, this year are being conducted virtually via WebEx. In terms of testing, the SSAT is required this year, uh, and SBS also accepts the ISEE, PSAT, SAT and ACT. And for any student for which English is not their first language, uh, we do require the, the TOEFL. Uh, there are some other options as well, uh, which include the IELTS exam uh, and uh, Duolingo. And then we also require a math uh, and English teacher recommendation. And applicants uh, should also submit their transcript for the current school year as well as the two previous school years. Uh, and then in, in, we do realize that some families might be interested in financial aid. Uh, and so if you, if you do um, uh, go through that process, we do require uh, that you complete a financial aid application as well as submitting uh, financial documents. Those are gonna go to TADS. Now on to next steps. If you haven't done so yet, we encourage you to complete our inqu the inquiry form, and my colleague will insert the URL uh, in the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. And we, we definitely encourage you to come visit us. Um, our campus is open for tours, and we wanna help you really navigate this process and learn more about SBS along the way. In order to stay in touch, um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. You can reach us either uh, via email or by phone. Uh, and then within the next week or so, um, you will receive a survey. And we, we encourage you to, to take a few minutes to, to share your feedback as we're always uh, striving to improve. And don't forget to check out our social media channels, which you can find at the bottom of the SPS uh, homepage. Now, at this time, I'll take a few minutes, uh, and, and I realize that there might be some questions related to uh, the application. Uh, and, and so I know that, uh, let's see here. Uh, looks like a question related to um, perhaps early enrollment, standard enrollment, uh, and and so if, uh, as I had mentioned before, if, if you're applying for, for early enrollment and um, you didn't meet the deadline, not to worry, we will automatically uh, kind of transfer those students um, who didn't meet the deadline to the next, uh, uh, the next enrollment process. So those students will be transferred into the pool for standard enrollment. And the same thing applies there. If, uh, if a student doesn't have a completed file, uh, by the January 21st deadline, uh, they will be automatically transferred into our rolling admission pool. And in terms of deadlines or in terms of notification dates, uh, early en enrollment applicants will find out a decision by January 14th. Uh, and standard enrollment, uh, that notification deadline of decisions will be March 10th, which is kind of the universal uh, notification date for uh, the vast majority of uh, U.S. boarding schools. And then with rolling admission, um, we will start um, getting back to those folks, uh, I would say probably mid-April.
And uh, just a review in terms of tests, in case uh, students are not able to, to take the SSAT. And as I mentioned, yeah, you could take the ISEE. And I know a lot of students that are maybe um, uh, coming from uh, feeder schools, maybe in New York City, um, that's a popular test. The, it stands for the Independent School Entrance Exam. So that's another option. And uh, the PSAT for older students, perhaps uh, 11th grade applicants or 12th grade applicants uh, may submit PSAT scores, SAT scores, and ACT scores as well. And uh, do you encourage applicants to submit an art portfolio? And so, yes, if, uh, if a student is passionate about the arts um, and, and or um, uh, any other activity, uh, but certainly with the arts, we would encourage you to submit an art portfolio and uh, you can send that to the admissions office and then we will uh, make sure that uh, we pass it along to our arts uh, faculty. And do you have openings for all grades for next year? And so, yes, we do have openings in all grades with the exception of maybe 12th grade. Um, that's going to be a little bit difficult, but I would imagine that we could at least accept uh, perhaps a few students uh, for 12th grade, but the current 11th grade is, uh, it, it is on the larger side. Um, and, and so, uh, but there are openings in uh, pretty much all of our grades. And can you begin as a day student and change uh, to a boarding student and perhaps maybe vice versa? Uh, yes, the, the short answer is yes, it is possible um, to, to make a change. Uh, it just requires you reaching out to uh, the admissions office and um, we will uh, be able to kind of walk you through that process uh, to, uh, to make the switch. Um, and do transcripts need to be official? Um, we do require official transcripts, uh, but we um, do encourage you to expedite the process. If you do have unofficial transcripts, please um, don't hesitate to send those to the admissions office. Uh, but ultimately, we do require the official transcripts uh, coming from the school. And I know another question, uh, what if my child is studying at a school, perhaps with an American or British curriculum, do they still need to take the TOEFL um, or the, the English language test? And so, Yes, it is possible that we could waive um, the test if your child is already studying at a school that um, has an American or a British curriculum. Uh, we'd encourage you to just uh, check in with the admissions office and, uh, and send us uh, perhaps a, a transcript from your child's school, uh, and then we would be able to work with you on that. And another question, does an applicant need to submit all of the application materials at the same time, or can the items kind of trickle in? And so, yes, it, it's, or the answer is, you don't have to send all of the application materials at the same time, or uh, we would encourage you to, to, to start with uh, step number two, which is uh, the application itself. And so it's just submitting or completing the biographic profile submitting the application fee, and that would trigger on our end uh, to uh, schedule the interview, and you can also reach out to us once you've done that, uh, and then you can go back and complete the, um, the student essays and the, the parent statement. And can we send additional letters of recommendation? Uh, the short answer is yes, you can. Uh, and uh, those can be sent uh, via email to the admissions office at admissions at sbs.org. Um, so that's fine. And we'll, we will uh, just add that to the student's file. And I know another uh, question that came up. Uh, was uh, perhaps what do you look for when evaluating applicants for admission? And so I would say that uh, there are probably four areas that we kind of weigh equally in many respects. Um, and so one is the interview, 
Another one, the teacher recommendations, uh, the transcripts, as well as the standardized testing. And so those four areas, um, I think it gives uh, a student an opportunity uh, to that if they perhaps uh, are weaker in any one of those areas, they uh, the other three areas can kind of balance things out for their file. Um, so I would say that those kind of four areas we we kind of weight equally and um, uh, gives students an opportunity to to gain acceptance to Stony Brook School. All right. So looks like that may be it for our questions uh, for this virtual open house. And this concludes the program. Uh, and I certainly want to thank all of our attendees uh, for joining us today and uh, for your participation and for taking the time out of your busy schedules. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to host you for this virtual open house. Uh, and I know um, that uh, you could have been uh, out holiday shopping, uh, but you chose to, to join us uh, today. And so we, we certainly appreciate it. And uh, we, uh, we wish all of you uh, and your families a, a Merry Christmas.